Okay. Good morning. How is everybody? Uh, how is everybody? Okay, there we go. <laughs> the peanut gallery. So, uh, hey, uh, good morning to you. Glad that, uh, <laughs> glad that uh, you are here with us. I heard that. <laughs> so, um, glad you're here with us this morning and uh, glad that we can be here for you. Um, I know things are uh, still different, but that is okay. Different is fine. It challenges us to uh, think outside the box, so that's a good thing. But um, just want to say again, good morning, glad that you're here with us, and uh, glad that you're going to worship with us this morning. Um, just a reminder, we're still um, in process of just looking at everything as far as when we're going to uh, kick our services back off uh, and everything, so just uh, continue to enjoy uh, service with us this way for a while, and um, we will uh, we'll let you know when that's going to change. But I uh, hope you had a Merry Christmas, and um, I hope you're looking forward to a good New Year. We were actually just talking about the fact that uh, the Hueys are going to be grilling some steaks uh, for New Year's, um, so I'm excited about that. So hopefully you've got your New Year's plans uh, situated and ready to go. But uh, anyway, we are going to uh, kick off 2021 big time, so um, we're going we're gonna to be ready, so I hope you are too. Uh, let me share this verse with you this morning before we get started uh, with our worship and um, just uh, get yourselves in a mindset uh, ready to worship, uh, whether you're sitting there on your couch or um, you're sitting in your barca lounger, uh, your lazy boy, whatever it is, uh, just get your, uh, your heart and mind where it needs to be so that we can worship uh, through the word and through the music this morning. But uh, listen to this verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 30. It says, And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. I think that we've got a lot to boast about. Each and every one of us, I think, have something that we can boast about that God has done in our life. And uh, as we move into this week, as we move into the new year, that is what I want to encourage you to do, is to look at all the blessings and all the things and what God has done for you and how he's continued to move in your life and um, how he got you through 2020. And um, just uh, give him the glory, give him the honor and the recognition that he deserves. All right, let's pray and then let's worship. Father, we just come to you now and we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you so much that uh, you care for us, that you are aware of us, that you are aware of our situations, that you are aware of our circumstances. And Father, I just ask that as we move forward through this day, that you would just help us to, um, to, to recognize and to see all of the things and all of the ways that you have blessed us and that you have helped us and that you have strengthened us, that you have given us peace, all of those things, Father, and that you would help us to boast in that, to give glory and honor to you for who you are and for what you are. Father, we thank you uh, for what we just uh, came through in celebrating uh, the birth of your son Jesus and uh, what that means to us as believers and what that means for the world. Father, I just ask that, uh, again, that as we move into 2021, that you would just, uh, uh, just give us strength, that you would just help us, Father, to progress forward and do what you have called us to do and live, Father, in a manner that is worthy of your gospel. It's in Jesus' awesome and mighty name we pray these things. Amen. So if you're at home, stand up, sing along with this. Old church choir. Take it off, Arl. There's revival and a spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Oh, once you choose it, you can't lose it. Oh, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy When the valleys that I wander Turn to mountains that I can't climb You are with me, never leave me Oh, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy 
church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Singing in my soul, I got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing, cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Where I belong 
when the roll is called up, you'll pass it on. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the saved earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. song comes from, it comes from Heavenly Jesus. Amen. He keeps me sane. could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he the word became flesh and the light shined among us his glory revealed living he loved me dying he saved Buried he carried, my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, a glorious. 
glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they led me up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on the tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. The hands that held nations stretched out on the tree. And took the nails for me, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, a glorious day. Death could not hold him, the grave could not keep him from rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever, one day he's coming. Glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for his sound for your sound. One day the skies in his glory will shine. sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming a glorious day oh glorious day glorious day oh glorious day Hey, good morning, everybody online and everybody that's here. Are y'all going to sit beside, behind me? Good. I'm glad you're coming out here so I can have somebody to preach to here in the building. But um, thank you for being here. I hope you had a great, great Christmas with, with uh, loved ones uh, this, uh, this Christmas. Has this been an unusual Christmas for you? Yes? It's been uh, rather unusual. You know, uh, um, there's, there's a lot that we could stress over this Christmas, isn't there? And, um, you know, typically uh, experts say that Christmas in particular is a stressful time anyway. Um, th there's uh, four things that experts say that are stresses at Christmas. One is anxiety over money. Uh, the next one is worry about, worry about gift giving. Am I giving the right gift, or what do they need, or, or what, can, what do they don't need? And, and you, so you worry about gift giving. The, the third one is time pressure. A lot of people kind of just put it off and put it off, procrastinate, and all of a sudden they find themselves pressured for time uh, to, uh, to get everything done. And then the fourth one that they say 
is uh, concern over family gatherings. Believe it or not, um, not every family uh, gets, uh, gets along when they're together and there's concern over those gatherings and what's going to happen and what's not going to happen and, and also uh, who's going to be there, who's not going to be there and, and all of those things can add to the stress of Christmas. Well, this year in particular, there's a lot of other things, other stressors involved with, with Christmas. There's the COVID deal. There's the social unrest. There's the presidency. There's um, all of these other things that are just adding to these normal stresses. So we can find ourselves, even uh, in, uh, as the year wraps up, kind of involved in stress. And so I want to uh, throw something out there. Uh, uh, I, I think that we should end... 2020 worshiping that we should end 2020 worshiping and so um, what we're focusing on today is the last sermon in um, our uh, regifting Christmas series and this sermon is entitled worship more fully worship more more fully um, one of the things I love about the Christmas account in Scripture is that even in the midst of what could have been a highly stressful time for these, um, these who are involved in this biblical account, we find that, that worship came from every one of them in the midst of that. We're going to start looking at Joseph today. Joseph, in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, we find uh, some information about Joseph. It says in, in verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill, that, uh, fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son and called his name Jesus. You see, one of the things we find about Joseph is, well, how did Joseph worship? Joseph worshiped through obedience. He worshiped through obedience. I love how the Bible explains this whole experience about Joseph. Joseph planned to marry his wife until he found out that she was pregnant. And, and then uh, when he resolved in his heart to kind of divorce her, an angel came to him in a dream and, and told him that she was really with child and had been, had been caused by the Holy Spirit. And I love what the Bible says about Joseph as he woke up from this miraculous dream. What's it say about him? It says in verse 24, that passage, it says, And Joseph woke up and did what? did exactly what the angel had told him to do. He woke up and did exactly what the angel told him to do. He, he didn't understand it all. I'm sure he didn't understand it all. What about you? He didn't understand it all, but he was obedient. Uh, I wish we had time to, to dig further into this because there's a great teaching point here that I don't want you to miss. And that teaching point is this. If you wait to understand everything that God is doing, you will never act in complete obedience. If you wait to find out everything that God is doing, you'll never act in complete obedience. Joseph didn't know it all. He was confused, but he still acted in obedience. And because of that, that is worship. When you act in obedience to God, you are worshiping him. Next, we're going to look at Mary. Mary worshipped also. Mary worshipped through surrender. If you turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, you see this, that Mary worshipped through surrender. In the sixth month, it says in verse 26, 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. I, I like that. Uh, do you think that after he gave her the news that Mary thought that she was the favored one? But he says, Greetings, O favored one, the, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at, sa at, at the saying and, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall, name, shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And, he, and the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, her relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In verse 30, the angel told Mary that she had nothing to fear and that God had, had a surprise for her. And later the angel tells her that there is nothing that is impossible with God. And her answer is incredible as she surrenders to the will of God. I wonder at the end of 2020, are you where Mary is and you're willing to surrender to God's will in your life? Mary said, let it be with me as you say. It is true. It's, it's a true act of worship. When... You are able to say to God, no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, when you're able to say to God, God, may your will be done in my life. The third thing that I, I want to point out is uh, that the shepherds worshipped the Lord through sharing the good news. There was worship in the shepherds in sharing the good news. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. The angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. You see, once they witnessed and once they experienced Jesus for themselves... God's word says that they could not contain the news of who Jesus was. They couldn't contain it. They shared it spontaneously with everybody they met. I wonder today if you would be willing at the end of 2020 to worship God by sharing the good news that has been given to you. That, did you know that's a form of worship? When you share the good news with other people. It says that they told everyone they met. 
Next, let's look at the wise men. The wise men also worshipped, but the wise men worshipped a different way. They worshipped through giving. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star, and it rose, and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And, as, and assembling all of the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the, summoned the wise men secretly and, and ascertained from them what time the star had, had appeared. And, and he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I, may too, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You see, there's worship all throughout the Christmas account in Scripture. There's worship all through it. And, and I wonder, this Christmas, have, have you truly worshipped? Have you taken the time to truly worship this Christmas, especially during this time of the year, I think we need to worship more fully. Uh, worship is this. It's, it's Worship is connecting with God, meeting Him, and interacting with Him in a way that only He deserves. Adoring Him, praising Him. Joseph worshiped through obedience. Mary worshiped through surrender. The shepherds worshipped by telling the good news the, the, the wise men worshipped by giving so let me ask you this morning how are you worshipping today in what way are you worshipping today I found that people do it in many different ways actually people are different and diverse even in their worship some people will say well I worship best through prayer Others will say, I, I, I'm best connected to God through singing. Others will say, I connect best with Him by reading the Word and studying the Bible. Some will say, it's when I gather with God's people in community that I feel the closest to God and really connect with Him. You know, there's, there's a point to be made here, and, and it, it is that we, we connect with God differently because we are different. Each of the people involved in the Christmas account connected to God differently and worshipped Him differently. Uh, I believe that, that worship is a lot like a staircase. It's a staircase that where we greet God and He greets us. We, we make our way up to God, but God also makes His way down to us. I love what Paul says in Galatians chapter 4, where he says, he says this, In the fullness of time, God sent His Son. The fullness of time. Uh, this fullness of time lines up with a whole lot of historical conditions that happened as Christ was being born. God used the engineers of Rome to usher in a uh, a time that where there were roads and access so the gospel could spread. God used a, a common language, uh, Koine Greek, uh, of the time to prepare that this message could be passed from mouth to mouth and be understood clearly. There was a whole lot of, of 
conditional historical occurrences that took place just as Christ was coming on the scene that perpetuated the gospel. So Paul says there, in the fullness of time, God allowed his son to be born of a woman. And then somewhere down around verse 6 of, of that chapter, it says, because of this, we have been adopted into a family, and part of this family right is that we have continual access to the Father. I love that picture. Meeting with the Father, and the Father meeting with us. Worship is easy after receiving the gospel message, or it should be. Worship is accessible. Worship is available. God is accessible. God is available. And when God is accessible and God is available, worship should come easy. I want to talk about today a process of worshiping fully that happens in us. There are three simple points that I want to point you to this morning that you can grasp these, uh, these uh, steps, this process, if you will, of worship. It's simple, but it's also profound. The first step is this, and it's found in Emmanuel. It's found in this, that God comes to us. The first step is that God comes to you. And that's the Christmas message, isn't it? God came to us. You see, here's the thing. God never waits for us to find Him. He never waits for us to find Him. He, he makes Himself known to us and searches us out. If you are listening this morning, if you're here in this room this morning, you already and, and you already know Christ as your Savior, you need to worship more fully this Christmas because God found you. God found you. If you're, if you're here this morning and if you're listening this morning and you've never trusted Christ, then you need to get this message this morning. You're here for a purpose. And that purpose is God is seeking you. God's seeking you this morning. You're here for, for that purpose. He's, he's searched you out, brought you to this place this morning, brought you before this screen this morning. And he's reaching out to you through the gospel message. He brought you here this morning to hear this very point that God comes to you. He comes to you right where you are. Let me correct some bad theology this morning. You see, God didn't come to earth to get to know you. God did not come to earth to get to know you. He created you in His image from the very beginnings. And so, if He created you in His image, then He already knows you. I think He already, he already knows who you are. He already knows everything about you. God doesn't come down here and say, Man, who is that? I, I really got to know Him. I really got to know her. He doesn't come like that. When, when God came to earth in the form of a man, He came so that we would know that He knows us. Get that straight. He came so that we would know that He knows us. He came so that we would know that, that God knows, that God cares, that God understands. He came not that He could know us, but that we could know that He already knows he already knows us. And that's why He came. And what is amazing about God is that He comes right to where you are. He knows us so well that He doesn't even ask, to give up, ask us to give up our personality. He doesn't ask to, you to give up your background. What He does, He says, I know where you've come from. I know what has gone on in the past. I know every detail of it. And I still want you to know me. 
those personality things that are in the past, uh, that those those background things that you've done that maybe you may be ashamed of right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those for my glory. And I'm going to bring you along on my journey so that you can share the gospel with others so that others could know me as well. He uses who you are and what you've been through and your personality for his purposes. John Maxwell says, we, we are, who we are determines the way we see everything. Who we are determines the way we see everything. In other words, when I look at you, I don't see you for who you are. I see you as I am. Let me further explain that. If I, if I am a trusting person, and then I, so I will have a tendency to see you as trustworthy because I am trusting. So if I'm a negative person, I will see the qualities in you that are negative, and I, I, will, I will be negative toward you, and I will only see the negative because that's who I am. So I see you based upon how I am myself. I see you through the lens that I have established. And that is why two people can see the same person and come away with two different assessments of that person. Because they see that person as they are, not as they tru the person truly is. And now let's get the picture. When God says, I want you to see this beautiful picture of what I am doing through Christ. Now for the wise men, they were astrologers. And so how do you think that God chooses to get the message to them? He knew that he needed, they were going to see things a, a different way because they were astrologers. So, he revealed himself to them through a star. Verse 1 said, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, King Herod, behold, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. So when God wanted to communicate with these wise men, he did it. He reached them where they were. He did it through a star. Now, with the shepherds, though, he communicated differently. He knew they saw stars every day and every night, and they weren't really studying stars and interested in stars. Maybe you knew it, and maybe you didn't, but shepherds were actually re weren't regarded too highly in society during the time. They were looked down upon because they had to spend so much time in the proximity of sheep, and sheep stink. So there's a lot of unclean things that they step in, and they're, they're around all the time, and so people don't think too highly of them. In the religious community, they were especially cast aside because of all the ritualistic cleansing that had to take place in order to worship. And these shepherds could never measure up because they were never quite clean enough to sacrifice, to go to the temple. And here's what I love about God. He says, I think the first message of this, the coming of my son, will be a personal one to the ones who stink the most. I, I'm going to go to the guys who smell like sheep dung. That's why I like Christmas. It's a true message. It, it always passes by and it's always missed by the religious. It goes right over those that are, it goes right to those, excuse me, that are, that are hurting the most. You would have thought that God would have just gone to the seminary, the local seminary to announce his birth. But God had different plans. 
What you also may not know about shepherds is that shepherds were constantly looking for signs all around them. They spent their entire lives outside, and during those days they were, they were superstitious. They told uh, over the fire many superstitious tales about sights and sounds of the night as they sat around the fire. And so what a better way to reach those looking for signs than with a sign, with an angelic choir. So to reach astrologers, a star. To reach the superstitious, the miraculous. And when God reaches out to you, he's going to reach you right where you are. And this is what Christmas is all about. God coming down to man. And in the history of mankind, this had never happened before. You see, men always found themselves caught up in religious activity, trying to reach out to their God, trying to make their God take notice. Maybe if I'm good enough, maybe if I volunteer enough, maybe if I go to church enough, maybe if I don't cuss, maybe if I don't lie, maybe if I don't do, or if I do something that maybe all of these things will make God accept me. And Christmas is about God reaching out to you where you are and saying, you know, I love you as you are. And I want a relationship with you. When Adam and Eve committed a sin, remember that back in the garden when, when, when they committed that, when they fell, they didn't look each other and say, oh my goodness, we've got to find God. Did they? No, the first thing that they did was they said, let's hide so that God can't find us. You and I are always hiding. We're always hiding so God can't find us. I love butter. Does anybody else love butter? I love butter. That's one of my downfalls, if you will. Butter. Hot bread and butter. But one time, my grandmother, she ran a, a nursing home facil facility my grandmother did. It was, a, it was a convalescent home or a nursing home. She had uh, a big home, and she had like uh, maybe eight um, older patients that she would take care of. And we always stayed in the upstairs um, of that building. And sh when she made her the meal of the day, though, we shared it with everybody. Everybody came to the table, uh, the the, the older people and everybody just, just ate at the table. Those that couldn't come, she would serve them in their beds. But um, she always had a big block of butter on the table. You know what I'm talking about? The big block? She always had a big block of butter on the table. And I knew it. And I, I was, I, I would say I was three, four years old. And so... Um, I hid under the table, and um, my grandmother came out there and put the big block of butter on the table. She came back out there, and she said, I know I just put a block of butter on the table. And so she looked all around. She's, I, I could hear her. I was under the table. Guess what I was doing? I had a big block of butter, and I was just eating it. I was eating on that big block of table, uh, butter. But I wasn't doing it out in the open. Guess what I was doing? I was hiding. Why? Because I knew I was wrong. I knew I was wrong. And, and, and um, listen, my, my grandmother let me know that was wrong by busting my backside. But that's just an example even as a young person, knowing that I was doing wrong, I ran and hid.
because I knew I was wrong. And we do that all the time as adults. We know we're wrong, and so what we do is, uh, I'm not going to church today. I'm not, going to ch- I'm not going down there to that church. They're all a bunch of hypocrites anyway. And you know what we do? We hide behind our, our phrasing, don't we? We hide behind our own phrasing. They're a bunch of hip- hypocrites down there anyway. They're no better than I am. And all the time, what we're doing is hiding because we know that we're wrong. Why do we hide? Don't we think that we'll be found? My grandmother found me. God always finds you. Because I've already said that God already knows you. He already knows. Look at Psalm 139. Verse 1 says, For the chief musician, a psalm of David, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my, my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all of my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. So God comes to where you are. And that's the first point, that God comes to where you are, and he knows you already. The second point is this, that God moves us to find him. God will move you to find him. We found that in Matthew chapter 2 that we read about uh, about the wise men. When he finds us, there's a, There's a change that happens within us, and we say, you know, I want to know more. And I want you to know me more. In that account of the scriptures of the wise men, it took them months to get to where the Christ was to be born. So there's a few observations we can make as we read about these wise men. The first one, that is, that, that... It may take you some time for you to find God. It may take you some time for you to find God. I heard a pastor speak of a Vietnam veteran who came to receive Christ at the end of the service who said, Pastor, since my days in Vietnam, I've been searching for something to fill this hole and looking for God. And now I see that God knew where I was all along. What about you and your journey? How long have you been looking for something to fill that hole? How long have you been looking? For some of you, it's been some time. It may take you some time, but there is no time like right now to make the discovery that he knows where you are. The second observation about the wise men is it may be difficult before you find him there may be difficulty before you find him I'm sure that the journey was not an easy one for the wise men but one of the issues they uh, they had was they got off of the right path uh, they got off of the right path they ended up going to the wrong place they they ended up going to see the wrong person to find what they were looking for. They thought the log- logical place to go to find a king of the Jews was to the palace, but it ends up that the only thing that they found was a half-crazed lunatic. Herod was out of his mind. He killed babies all over the land after he found out that the wise men weren't coming back. Not only did they go to the wrong place and not only did they see the wrong person but they also accepted bad advice you see Herod didn't want to worship Christ but he told them that he was going to and an indication to scripture was that they really intended to go back 
to tell him where the Christ was, but it's only because an angel appeared to them and said, don't go back, that they didn't go back. And so what, what that indicates is that they accepted some bad advice. Here's the thing with you. You are going through difficulty as you're searching through for, for God, trying to fill that hole. You're, you're, you're getting off of the, ro- the, the right path. You're going the wrong direction. You're looking for God in the wrong place. And you're accepting bad advice from those around you. It may be difficult before you actually find God, especially if that's you. The third thing that we can learn there is it was their focus. They, they, they found what they were looking for because they refocused. Let's do an experiment. Look around you right now and find something that's blue. Somebody might be wearing it in your house or next to you. It might be other places throughout the room. But until I mentioned finding blue, you really didn't even consider that there was blue around you. And now as you look around you, you see blue in several different places. That's called having a blue mindset. Your mind is now focused on blue. Here's what I want you to do for 2021. Here's what I want us to be for 2021 as a church. Let's be God focused. Let's be God focused. And so what that means is we're constantly aware that God is all around us at all times. Because our minds are set on God. Our minds are set on Him. We need to have a God mindset, not a blue mindset, a a God mindset. So that as we look around, we say, that's God, that's God, that's God, that's God. That's obviously God. True worship is seeing God in such a way that you live your life seeing God everywhere. That's true worship. That's worshiping Him for who He is. Every interaction, every relationship, every experience is is a discovery of God working in your life. Now, why do you see God there and others don't see God there? They have the same interactions. They have the same relationships. They have the same experiences that you do, but they don't see God. It's very simple. Finding God requires a God focus, a God perspective. And that's what this whole the, the whole purpose of this preaching series was about, regifting Christmas. You see, you've got to turn this thing around. You have to have a, a God mindset. I love this passage of Scripture in Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. It says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. You see, it's when you have that God mindset that you see him everywhere. Let us do what Hosea said. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on. That means work hard to acknowledge him. And so the first step of the process of fully worshiping is that God comes to us. 
The second one is that God moves to find moves moves us to find him. And the third one is this. When we find him, we will worship him. When we find him, we will worship him. The thing is, is when you find him, you are beautifully moved and changed into who he wants you to be, the purpose that he has for you. The wise men were moved emotionally. They were moved physically, and they were moved physically, uh, spiritually, excuse me, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. They, they fell down on their knees and worshipped him physically. They presented him with their best that they had to offer. The wise men show us how to properly worship God. When they, when they came to Jesus and asked him about the, uh, about the law, and, and, and which, uh, which was the most important commandment of the law, here's what Jesus said. Mark chapter 12, Jesus said, the first, of, uh, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord, with all your God, with, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And this is the first commandment. Now get this, and you'll understand Christmas. Jesus said that you have to love God fully, completely. Here it is. Give all that you have to God because God gave all that he has to you. You see, we are a conduit, a conduit to send the message of, the, of Christmas to the entire world. You will never know the needs that you meet by re-gifting the love that has been given to you. And this is our gift to express our love with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. Listen to this poem. I had the nicest Christmas list, the longest one in town. Until Daddy looked at it and said, you'll have to cut it down. I knew that what he said was true beyond the faintest doubt. But I was surprised when I heard him say, you left your best friend out. And so I scanned my list again and said, oh, that's just not true. But Daddy said, his name's not there, that friend who died for you. Then I clearly understood it was Jesus that he meant. For him who should come first of all, I hadn't planned a cent. I had made a Christmas birthday list and left the Savior out. But oh, it didn't take me long to change that list about. And though I've had to drop some things, things I'd like to have a lot, my Savior gets what he deserves. Now his name's on top. In your life, in my life right now, is his name on top. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength? Now, let me end with this. God comes to where you are. I don't know where you are, but God is reaching out to you today. He's reaching down from heaven right now, and he's touching you right where you are, and he's willing to receive you. And you can never go too far that he can't find you. The second thing is once you discover him, he moves you to seek him more. He comes to us and knocks, and when we open our heart's door, he comes in and, and dines with us, and we discover so much more than we ever thought we would when we really worship him. And the 
third thing that you'll find is that once you truly connect with him, you will be changed. There are those here that are listening online that need to hear that message this morning. You've been looking in the wrong place, among the wrong people, getting all the wrong answers. But truly what you need is to find God because He's reaching out to you right now. The Bible says that He can be known by you. It says that you need to seek the Lord while He may be found. And God can be known by you. But here's the deal. I've said it already. He already knows you. He already knows you. And He still wants a relationship with you. And so, at the end of 2020, my plea to you is that we need to worship more fully in 2021. We need to be God-focused as a church so that everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we experience, we can say, that's God, that's God, that's God. Because He's there. And He desires to interact with you even though your past may be a little shady. Even if you're hiding under the table with a pat of butter, he still wants a relationship with you. The Bible says that, that God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He wanted a relationship with you even in the midst of you going to wrong places, seeking the wrong advice, doing the wrong thing. What a great way to start 2021 than with a new relationship. I would love to see this all over Facebook. I, I see it on Facebook a lot, in a relationship, in a new relationship. You see that? Wouldn't it be great if we saw all over Facebook, I'm in a new relationship. And that relationship is with God. In a new relationship. You can have that relationship today. And experience what being new is all about. Being changed. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your grace and your mercy on us. Coming to us. Not that he may know us, but that we might know him. Because God, you already know us. You know our hearts. You know our lives. Lord, I pray that you would give grace to those who are listening. Help them to realize that you are seeking them out right now. And if you're listening online, I want to ask you, do you want this relationship? Do you want to be changed? You can know him more fully right now by simply praying a prayer, asking forgiveness. Something like this. Pray right there where you are, God. It's my desire to have a relationship with you. So God, I want to come out of hiding. I want to reveal myself to you, and I want a relationship with you. Forgive me when I fail. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Fill this hole within me. And God, in all of my searching, I just now realize that you knew where I was the whole time. 
you weren't searching for me. So God, come into my heart. Make me a new creation in Christ. Help me to worship fully this year. And now, Christian, I want to ask you if you'll make that commitment that I've asked you to make, and that is this. If you already know him, would you make a commitment at the end of 2020, at the beginning of 2021, to worship more fully? Would you take some time right now where you are to, to make that commitment to him? That you'll be God-focused and see him everywhere in your life. Just take a few minutes. Commit to him. And so, God, we love you. And it's my desire that we as a church worship more fully. God, work in our hearts and work in our lives. You know us better than we know ourselves. Touch the places that we need you. And may we worship you. May we adore you. And may we honor you. It's in the holy and precious name of Jesus that we pray these things. Amen. today, please let us know via Facebook or text. Uh, we'd love to know that. I'd love to pray for you and uh, wish you all a happy new year.